right here. Hey guys, welcome tonight. My name is Noelle Ellie, and I just wanted to welcome you all here. Um, you should have received flyers tonight uh, talking about Terry Cole and Patricia Morano, their upcoming events that they have going on. Terry has five spots left in her fabulous six month coaching program. And on January 20th, she's teaming up with Dr. Frank Littman for her Be Well Cleanse. Um, if you're feeling run down or you need a recharge, I can speak from experience that this cleanse is phenomenal. So um, you should try it out and uh, your body will thank you. So uh, January 3rd through the 5th, Patricia Morano is having a Sati Life Retreat in Kripalu. And it's, I love Kripalu and, and Patricia Morano, so the fact that they're teaming up, I'm super excited about this. So you guys can check out the flyers for that. And then anything you hear tonight, if you wanna tweet it, um, we're using the hashtag, hashtag your dream year 2014 and that's at Intensati and at Terry underscore Cole. And as you came through the lobby, you should have seen all of our amazing items out there. We're having a raffle, five for $20, um, or Patricia's merchandise table and Terry's merchandise table. All of the proceeds are going to her sister, um, Cancer Warrior, Tammy, because livers are expensive. So if you're looking for really good Christmas presents, you're not gonna find a better, a better deal than here, and it's going towards a really good cause. So please check it out. And um, we're also announcing the raffle winners at 10 o'clock. So I just want to give a special shout out to our sponsors, uh, Topperson, um, Waiting to Inhale. You guys should have been able to check out the Oxygen Bar, um, New York Open Center, and Because. I don't know if you guys got a chance to check out the energy work in there, but it is out of this world. Um, and to all of our volunteers tonight, I just want to say thank you guys so much, always. Like, we can't do this without you. So if everyone will just give a round of applause to our sponsors and volunteers. <laughs> and now I would like to welcome two very special people to the stage. I have been in care since May, and they have had such a profound impact on my life. I can't really put it into words other than I feel more me. Um, being in network care is just, I, I'm so grateful to you both. And so um, I would love to welcome to the stage Kathleen. She is the creative maven behind Vikas and an expert in feminine soul growth. Her passion is speaking and inspiring women to open to their feminine core, love fiercely, and live powerfully. I don't know, I think that sounds pretty amazing to me. Um, Vikas birthed from David and Kathleen's hunger to create an inspiring environment that cultivates a community for those seeking to align with their innate power to live a vibrant, passionate, and meaningful life. So, without further ado, welcome Kathleen to the stage. He's not gonna talk. <laughs> He's just walking me. <laughs> That's my David. Whoa, that is bright. Holy cow. Let me like get with you guys. Hi, everybody. So, right off the bat, we get to get the night started, and I wanna get one thing straight from the get go. Are you ready? You have access every single moment of every single day without end to the version of you who's living her dream year. And I'm not talking about next year. There's a version of you, each and every one of you, that is so alive, aligned, and connected to the truth of who you're born to be that she has been living her dream year every single year since the day she and he were born. Can you get with that? Yeah. yeah. So this is a specific channel that exists. And there's nothing that you have to fix or heal or get rid of or um, deserve or be worthy of in order to tune into that. You have the power right now to align with the version of you who so fully owns their magnificence and who is joyfully creating their dream year every single year but just, it's a certain channel, like a TV channel, right? Like we watch channel two, four, six, eight. 
It's a certain channel. And on that channel, there's a specific vibe, there's a specific energy, right? Just like on TV, there's different frequencies for every channel. You guys with me on that? You get that metaphor, the channels, right? They was like, make sure they know what the hell you're talking about when you say channels. So, okay, good. So there's a certain channel, right, with a certain frequency. And on that channel, you have a certain physiology also. You have a certain body and a certain posture that vibes at that dream life, dreamier frequency. Does that make sense? It's like an open, receptive, and you're emanating that vibe. You guys are familiar, I'm sure, with the basic law of physics, like attracts like. We all know this, right? So that's what I'm talking about. This is a channel that is on your soul channel. So imagine you're in that place of vibing soul. Dreams manifest in that space. It's not so effortless. Excuse me, it's not so effortful, it's actually effortless. Can anybody use some more of that? Yeah. Right, like sign me up for that. Okay, so how does this work? This girl is telling me, this girl Kathleen of a cause, like I don't even know who they are. So she's telling me there's this channel where I'm connected with my soul and I'm living my dream year. Okay, you with me? So this is true, so how does this happen? Well, you need a container for that. You need a body that's congruent with that and that's aligned with that. There's different postures we all have. A posture like this is probably not on the soul channel. Right? There's like some contraction, some defense versus this is like, let's go life. I'm here. I'm ready. I'm present. Let's do this. And there's like a receptivity that's occurring. So when I was in my 20s, I definitely was not on this channel. I'm not in my 20s anymore, by the way. I'm 35. But anyway, so I definitely wasn't on that channel. I wasn't on my soul channel. I wasn't living in that body. And I had, you know, all these ideas of my dream life and my dream relationship. And at the time, I was attracted to unavailable men. That was my pattern. I didn't know it at the time that I was attracted to unavailable men. And my particular flavor of unavailable man that I liked were my yoga teachers. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you guys relate, the yoga teachers. So I remember when I first moved to Manhattan, I, I joined Crunch Gym. This is like back in the day. This is like 2001, 2002. I would get out my schedules, you know, of all the different locations, the downtown locations like Astor Place, Greenwich, and I would look for where he would be. You know, and I would plot out my week. I'm like, oh my God, so Tuesdays at seven, check, Thursdays at 10, like, and literally I'd build my week. I know this is really sad, but I would build my week around the class and I would get all dolled up, you know, before yoga class. You know? <laughs> I'd be doing my hair and my makeup. And like now David will say like, I roll out of bed and I look like shit, you know, when I go to yoga. It's like, I, I, you know, I don't do that for you now, but anyways. So I would get dolled up, I would get there early and you know, I would get a lot of attention because I was social, I was a regular, it was just a natural thing that was happening, but when they would adjust me or like give me some advice on my, uh, my practice, I would interpret it that they liked me. You know, I was just like running with this story, like, oh my God, they're giving me so much attention, like they must like me. So inevitably the day came when the bomb would get dropped and the G word would come out. <laughs> or they'd be talking to me after class like, oh yeah, blah, 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 my girlfriend. And I was like, what? Like, literally, it was like a deer in headlights. I'm like, what? Like, wait, he has a girlfriend? Like, I thought he liked me. Like, I, I really was confused, and I was actually really hurt by it. And it happened more than one time, and it was actually really devastating because I didn't see the pattern at the time, and I was actually angry. I was like, what the fuck? Like, I'm a girl who's single and available and ready for love. Like, how dare this guy who has a girlfriend come on to me? <laughs> you want to relate? So I'm running with this like convoluted story, you know, that it's all their fault, you know, like not looking here, you know, that old adage, one finger out is like two fingers take the responsibility here. So about that time, luckily I was introduced to CARE, the work that we do at Vakaz at our center here on 20th Street. And I'll never forget one of my first sessions, they wanted to help me get more connected because I was living so much in my head. I had like no clue what was going on down here. I was just like, it was all going on up here. And they're like, okay, now bring all your attention, your focus, and your energy right here to this area. And I'm like, okay, I could do this. I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, okay, I am. And she's like, no, I wanna see more presence, more focus, like lift the area, Kathleen. Like we wanna see you raise the tissues. I'm like, okay, I did. And she's like, no, more. Like I wanna feel you here. And I really was trying so hard and I just broke down crying. Because I realized I was totally disconnected here. I was totally shut down. I had built up this defense, and it was a blind spot. 
And it was like that pattern with men just unraveled in that moment where I'm like, holy shit, I'm the one that's unavailable? But I've been reading the books and I've been going to the workshops and I've got the teachers and I made my list, you know, like how tall he is, the color eyes he has, you know, what his breath smells like, like all the crazy shit we write on our list. Who has the crazy lists out there? I know I'm not the only one that had a crazy ass list. It was like six pages long. But it was like, I got it. I got it in that moment where I'm like, oh my God. Like I've got these ideas of this high vibing dream relationship, dream man, dream year, dream job, all of that on paper. But I didn't match that vibe. And I got it. I was like, holy shit, I'm incongruent with what I want. And I didn't realize that I was actually in a defended place just invisibly from all the shit I saw in my childhood, my parents messed up marriage, stuff we don't realize that impacts our bodies and that we carry with us. So needless to say, life changed dramatically when I started receiving that care. And with every session, I just felt more and more alive, more connected, more clear, like knowing my boundaries, like drawing the line of like, no more unavailable men. Like I know who I am, I know what I deserve and really having the courage to wait and also just watching as I tuned into that soul channel with every visit, leaving more and more aligned with who I am, and not trying to be someone else and really owning that. Have you guys ever been to a workshop or a talk and you leave like totally excited, like, oh my God, this is it, like this is it. You guys, that you tell your girlfriends, like I swear, this is it, I found the answer, my life is gonna get better. And then the day comes where it's like, you're in that place again and you're like, wait a second, what happened? So, like, I thought that was it and the momentum, you lose it. Well, not this time. Not this time, not this night, not this year. Because we're here for you guys. At Vakaz, we're offering you an extraordinary opportunity to not just listen to the exquisite wisdom these women are gonna give you from their heart and souls tonight, but to actually tap into a body that can live into these changes and own these changes and embody these changes and resonate on that soul channel and resonate on that dream life frequency. Does anybody want some of that? Yeah. Yeah? yeah? So I'm talking about congruence. I'm talking about the opportunity to actually like own who the fuck you're born to be from the inside out unapologetically with grace. You don't have to say the fuck word, I guess, sorry. It's like maybe not that graceful to some of you, it's how I talk. But like owning who you're born to be from the inside out and beyond the mind without having to understand or figure it out and just have the path illuminate for you. Have your heart lead. Experience just openness and seeing life organized for you because you're vibing who you're supposed to be. And you're experiencing that energetic, vivacious, fearless version of you who's here to fully own their dreams once and for all. And to be a leader for all women and all men so they can do the same. So we are super honored to be here, to be able to offer you an opportunity to get a taste of that. We've got our tables. I don't know if you guys saw, there's like a little cave in the lobby. It's like a secret little room. We've got a couple of our tables if you want to come and experience a sample. And you're invited to come to our center on 20th Street. And we have a landing page, a special website, vacaz.com backslash, backslash dream year, if you want to check it out for a free soul power session. But more than anything, I just want you guys to feel the energy of the possibility of what it's like to really step into the power of who you're born to be. It's each and every one of your birthright. And we're absolutely, absolutely honored to be here with you ladies tonight. Thank you for having us as the sponsors. Thank you. So I get to introduce our next speaker. Forgive me, I have to read. So let me do her justice. As a licensed therapist, transformation coach, and mentor to well-known personalities in wellness, empowerment, and entertainment, Terry Cole is honored to help clients remain present and grounded despite life's complexities. She's their catalyst for clarity of purpose, confident decision-making, and balanced success by providing sustainable, action-oriented solutions to implement today that allow them to live a life that thrills them as their stardom skyrockets. Sounds pretty damn hot to me. Let's welcome Terry Cole. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thanks, baby. One choice. 
What if I told you that right now, every single one of you is probably faced with one choice that if you actually have the courage to make it, will change everything? So I'm going to ask you to close your eyes, just indulge me, take a deep breath, and I want you to visualize yourself on the fence that you may be on. And I want you to look to the right. And this is what you know. This is what's already happening. This is what has happened from the choice that you've already made. And then I want you to look to the left. And I want you to see and try to feel what could happen, what is possible, if you actually allowed yourself the knowledge that you have a choice in every single part of your life. And if you use the excuse that you're not aware you have a choice, it doesn't make you not have a choice. You have a choice. That's just a default position. So I just want you to dial into that feeling in whatever area of your life that you don't feel like you are living your best life. And tell yourself the truth right now in your mind about what's possible, what could happen if you have the courage to make that choice. Okay, open your eyes and join me. So I grew up as a big drinker from a big drinking family. I was actually allowed to drink in my house by the time I was 16. Like, who does that? Like, let's encourage your kids to drink. It's, it's go time. Everybody, let's have a beer party. So by the time I got to college, by the time I was a senior in college, I would say that my liver was pretty well pickled. So I'd been seeing a therapist for about a year. It's about three months left of my senior year of college. And I go in to see her, talking about what's going on. And she said, you know, what you've been describing is alcoholic behavior. And I said, who? I'm not kidding. I was literally like, what? She was like, you. I go, well, what do you mean? Like what? She said, uh, do you think it's normal to black out? I was like, yes. She was like, well, it's not. That is alcoholic behavior. I said, well, what else? I needed proof. Because to me, that was normal. Everyone in my life did that. She said, you fight with your boyfriend. You do things when you're drunk that you would never do when you're sober. I said, but everybody does that. She said, that may be so. But I'm not treating everybody. I'm just treating you. And if you don't get help with a 12-step program, I will have to terminate our relationship. I was like, holy shit, is my therapist breaking up with me? Oh my god, is it actually that bad? Terrifying. So I was like, it's a challenge. I'll take it on. I'll go to an AA meeting, whatever. So keep in mind, it's the 80s, people. So I just want to give you the visual. So it's the 80s, and I'm wearing my stirrup pants, right? <laughs> and I've got my jelly shoes on. And, you know, I had curly hair, but I guess it wasn't curly enough because I also got a perm. So I wanted it to be doubly curly. My hair was dyed red, and it was about down to here. My nails, and they were natural, FYI, no acrylics. They don't even have them anymore, but they used to be acrylics. Out to here, probably. And the most ridiculous amount of stage light makeup. All of you young people don't even know what that is, but the old people. Remember stage light? Purple, everything had glitter. It was like my face was just one big glitter. Neon earrings, this big. And of course, you couldn't go anywhere without your removable shoulder pads. <laughs> you could look like a linebacker in anything. It was excellent. I was like, I'm hot. So I was all gussied up in my 80s finest, listening to Madonna probably, lucky star, in my car going. So I was going to Syosset, Long Island, to the basement of a little church. So I said to my boyfriend, my college boyfriend, I'm going to an AA meeting. And he said, really? And I said, yeah. He said, you want me to come? I said, nope. He was like, OK. So I get there, I park, and you know, I just reassure myself in the rearview mirror, like, you are looking fine and not like an alcoholic. <laughs> right. So I go in. And you know, everybody smoked then, young people. I know it's hard to believe we all smoked inside, but I go inside. And you know, I wanted to be considerate and smoke my Parliament 100s considerately. So I sat by the door. So as I'm sitting by the door, because I was a little afraid, maybe it's a cult, I don't know what they're going to do here, but I'd like to be by the exit. <laughs> so I'm sitting, and I see this woman who I thought was beautiful. Of course, she was similarly shellacked, with like the biggest hair, the longest nails. She had a French. She was so pretty. Um, all the makeup in the world. And so, of course, everyone knows who the newbie is. So she comes over, and she's like, hi, are you new? I'm like, yeah, obviously, yeah. And she said, oh, you know, what, what brought you here? And I just honestly said, uh, my therapist said I needed to go to one 12-step meeting or she would break up with me. She was like, oh, okay. And just to be polite, because I didn't know what the culture was in these rooms, I didn't know. To be polite, I just said, so, so why are you here? 
And so she stopped, and she looked me straight in the eyes, and she said, I killed a six-year-old boy in a drunk driving accident. And so I have to figure out how to live every day knowing that I broke a mother's heart. And I was like, um, I'm sorry. I mean, I had no idea what to say. I just was horrified. And so I managed to control my desire to bawl hysterically until the end of that meeting. And I couldn't stop thinking about how easily and how readily that could have been me. I started drinking when I was 12. I drove drunk before I had my license. Do you understand that? I didn't even have my license yet, and I had driven drunk upstate New York. And I had driven drunk many, many times. And what the overall feeling that I had was absolute, ridiculous, profound gratitude to this beautiful angel who told me a story that sparked the transformation that changed my life. And in that moment, I made the one choice to stop drinking. And in that one choice, everything else that has happened in my life has stemmed from that one choice. So I get back in my car, and when I can start to drive, I still couldn't, so I just put the radio on while I was bawling and snotting everywhere. And um, Whitney Houston's The Greatest Love of All comes on. So just in case I wasn't bawling, now I'm sobbing, like, that's right, I would have loved myself. Yeah, it's ridiculous. So I go back to campus, I decide I'm moving into New York City, so in the first 30 days of not drinking, I lost 30 pounds, found my cheekbones, was like, whose face is that? Oh my God, <laughs> whose body is that? When, when did that happen? I thought I had a stomach out here, okay. And literally in 30 days, it was like gone. And my entire life from that point, I got really into, first of all, I realized the power of therapy, right? How lucky was I that I had a therapist who was like, hi, you're an alcoholic, how you doing? And knowing, saying, if I didn't get help, if she hadn't threatened me, I probably never would have gone to an AA meeting. I probably never would have changed my life in that way. But when you start thinking about your own life, if you are not conscious that you have a choice, the mysteries of the universe are vast, and all of you know this. I can't tell you why I've had cancer twice. I can't tell you why there's wars and tsunamis and whatever. But I can tell you that every single one of you here has a choice to how you respond to every situation that you find yourselves in. If you don't know that, what happens is you're the little boat and your life is the tsunami and you're just trying to hold on, just trying to get through. It's all happening to you. But the truth is that you are the tsunami and your life is the boat and you decide and if you choose not to decide, that is still a decision. By not choosing, you are choosing inaction. You are choosing to stay with the status quo. Maybe I would have chosen to stay in denial and pretend that blacking out was normal. Isn't that what everybody does? Well, it isn't. Or maybe I would have had a decade of hell. In that moment when I made that decision and I had all of this gratitude and felt so divinely connected to source, to God, to the universe, because I got it. When I was driving back to campus that night, I literally made a, I made a pact with the powers that be saying, thank you. It doesn't have to be me who killed a six-year-old child. I didn't have to have that experience to gain the wisdom it was a chance. I literally felt like I was given the most profound do-over of my life. And that knowledge that I had a choice has impacted every other experience that I've had. I used to think if I'm born into a family, well, it's kind of a crappy hand. Like, this is my hand because I was born into this family. I'm not dissing you, Mom. I'm just saying. Because, you know, she's going to watch this and be like, what are you saying about the family? Um, <laughs> The family's fine. But nobody was sober. Nobody was sober. And when I was sitting on that fence, what I saw on this side of the fence was just best laid plans that went to shit. Just the, the desire to do something great with the inability to actually do something great. And in looking at this side, the other side, 
it was a blank slate. So I continued on in therapy. I got really involved with feeling empowered and the empowerment movement and read all the authors and Louise Hay and Wayne Dyer and M. Scott Peck, The Road Less Traveled and every other one that was popular at the time because I couldn't believe how amazing it was that I get to choose, that it's my choice what I do in my life. So I want to know what you guys are choosing. If you want 2014 to be literally your, the best year of your life, you must make a conscious decision to do that. You must honestly look at what you're doing in your life. So many of my clients have shadow addictions. They're fine, I'm not an alcoholic, it's fine. They're drinking three glasses of wine a night. And here's the thing, you may be able to do that. My father was the highest functioning alcoholic I ever met in my life. He never yelled at me, he never hit anybody, he never racked up his car, he never missed a day of work, he retired at 51 with a lot of money. But there is a cost for him never choosing to get sober, right? That cost was his relationship with his family. Nobody knew him. He never talked. We never knew what was going on ever. And then he died. So is that going to be your story? That you could have, you wanted to, you were going to, but then you didn't? So I'm going to ask you to do a little, little exercise with me for the last few minutes that I've got with you. Once again, close your eyes. Take a deep breath, and on the exhalation, I just want you to visualize any constriction, any fear, any limiting thoughts that are no longer serving your greatest good in your best life, leaving your body through your breath. And as you're inhaling, I want you to visualize that you are inhaling peaceful, positive energy, the pure potential of your life. And now I want you to visualize yourself back on that fence. And there's probably one or two choices that you need to make that can change everything. So in this moment, I want you to make a commitment to getting present in your life enough, brave enough, to look at what they are. Give yourself permission to go for it. I don't want you to look on that left side of the fence at what your fear mind or your mafia mind, as I like to call it, might tell you. I want you to visualize and create the pure possibility of what could be if you allowed yourself to step into your greatness, step into your birthright, as Kat said. Now gently open your eyes. I want to leave you with this final thought that I have no doubt that each and every one of you has the possibility, you have the capability to be aware of your choices, to stop being in denial of what's not working in your life, of stop soothing yourself with things that are getting in the way of your greatness. And I hope that this talk tonight will encourage you to make that one choice. Thank you. Now, I'd like to introduce the next speaker. I don't even need these notes, but I kind of just wanted them there in my breath. Um, our next speaker is a very close friend of mine who's incredibly loyal, incredibly generous, has hosted another fundraiser for my sister's liver because livers are expensive, yo. They really are. Um, she's the founder and creator of Intense Sati and Sati Life. And the way that this beautiful, amazing human has changed my life just by me actively in the last year being committed to an intensati practice is really hard for me to put into words. But I am braver than I've ever been, stronger than I know. I have everything I need. And these are all the affirmations that we do while we're doing intensati, and they're always rolling around in my head. When I want to say something negative, I'm like, wait, what was the affirmation from today? So please welcome the beautiful, the talented, the wise and wonderful, Patricia Moreno. Oh my God, I'm so happy to be here. Terry, I love you so much. It's such a privilege to be hosting this event with her. Um, she, that was amazing, don't you think? I was laughing, I was crying. 
It's such a privilege to be here with all of you, and it's such a privilege that you guys showed up tonight. It's a busy time of year, and it's so exciting to be able to share what I love with all of you and with so many beautiful women that are going to be here tonight. I, I want to talk about tonight, you know, one of the things that's the theme for tonight is that we're talking about what are the challenges in our lives that led to a triumph and leaving you with one thing, the thing that we really think that is a benefit that you can take away. You know, there's a lot of roads. And the one that really will vibe with you, I really want, my intention for all of you tonight is that you hear something tonight, something that will have you shift, have you shift the way that you think, have you shift the way that you speak, have you shift the way that you live, in a direction that you actually choose. And tonight I'm gonna to share with you a little bit of what my challenge to Triumph was, but I actually first wanna start by harmonizing us all together. And we're gonna do an ohm all together. We'll do three. And the reason why I've picked that as our way to harmonize is because I once heard that ohm is the sound of the universe saying yes. Is that beautiful? That the language of the universe is yes, 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 yes. And that we each have our own individual own. And when we tune into our yes and we align it with the universal yes, it's kind of like making love to the universe. And our creation is that co-creative process. It's like we're making babies with the universe. That's our job. We're here to birth things. We're here to bring forth things. We're here to make the world better than it was. That's our right. That's our gift. But sometimes we forget. And sometimes we forget we have this co-creative partner and we think we're alone. And so what I want to do is have us harmonize with that intention that we're aligning to our yes, that we're aligning in the vibration of yes, receptive, open, accepting, willing, loving, because in that way, as we all speak tonight, there's a lot of gems that you're going to hear tonight. And if you prepare your mind to receive, what you personally want to receive. You set the intention, may I hear something tonight that will reveal, that will have me know even more than ever before that I am enough, that I have enough, and I am powerful beyond measure. So will you join me in that? Okay, so rub your hands together. This is just the waking yourself up, bringing the energy, reminding ourselves we're not just the physical body. The physical body is 10%. So we don't just want to look for the physical solution of something. We really want to open ourselves up to the physical, spiritual, and mental solution. Now I want you to place your hands on your heart. We want to make the journey from our head to our heart. And I want you to close your eyes. And I want you to just take an awareness of where you are, and there's 200 and, I don't know how many people, how many, there's a lot, of beautiful, amazing people with an intention to live a great life, and that we're here together, and it's a blessed, blessed moment, because when we come together as a community with an intention to uplift, not only ourselves, we're uplifting ourselves with the intention to uplift others, which I know is what most of us are here for. I dare to say everybody. So as we hold this intention in our heart, may we tonight hear exactly what we need to hear. And may we honor that, recognize that, and take action on that. Big deep breath in and hold it. Big deep exhale. And now we'll all inhale. Oh. Oh. 
and open your eyes and ears. Thank you. Do you feel tuned in? Do you feel better? It's always evidence. It's always good evidence when you feel good. It's always evidence that you're in alignment when you feel good. And sometimes we think, oh, it feels good, but is this really right? Do I feel good enough? Is this going to last? <laughs> so I want to tell you a little bit about um, one of my journeys. Maybe I'll get to two, but it depends on time. So we're talking about where we were challenged and then where the triumph was and the bridge. So I think I'm going to share with you tonight about the time when I was single and looking for love. Is anybody in here single and looking for love? Excellent. Um, so, I was, it was probably six years ago. Cal, how long was that? Seven years ago? Seven. Kellen's my wife. She's sitting in the front row. Um, so about seven years ago, I am looking for love. I am thinking, wow, it's time. 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 I literally am like, oh my God, it's time, it's time. I used to get so many dates. I used to be able to date easily like that. It had been five years since I'd been in a relationship. And I was like, what's wrong with me? What is going on? I used to always have somebody. I used to always be in a relationship. In fact, I was in a relationship that would overlap. Relationship, 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 relationship. Not something I'm proud of, but very true. And so when it got to this point where I was like, where is everybody? What's happening? Have I lost it? Like, what's going on? I really started to get worried. And I started to do all of these things that everybody does. I went on Match.com. It was a disaster. I was dating, dating, dating. And tonight, what I want to point out to you is there's a difference between being a no and being a yes. And that if you don't have something that you really, really, really want, that the place to look is you must be more of a no than you are a yes. Does that make sense to you? So if the universe says yes, then in order to have a manifestation, I like to think about it as thinking or speaking like God thinks. I want to speak like God thinks. Speak like God speaks. I am a creative being. I am made in the image and the likeness of the creator. Therefore, I must have the creative faculties that I read about. And so I want to play two parts tonight. Tonight I'm going to play the part of Patricia Moreno as a no first, as it relates to dating, not having it. Oh my gosh. I'm still single. I am 40 something. This is never going to work out. What am I going to do? Oh my God, I better get on match.com. I'm going to get a match.com. What else can I do? I'm going to announce it in my class. I'm going to announce it in my class and say, anybody sets me up, you get free coaching for a year. Come on. I can't be that bad. I'm sure you know somebody. You must know somebody. I'd like, is there, and then being at home, is there something wrong with me? Am I too old now? Oh my gosh, but I know, I, I know, I know I really want love. I know it's meant to be. I really want to be in love. I really want to be in love. I want to have someone to share my life with, but it's never going to work out. I'm too old. Do I, I don't look as good as I used to. Nobody wants to date this at this age. Oh my God, but that's the wrong thing to think. I'm not going to think that. I'm not going to think that. It's got to be possible. Let me go again. Let me try to ask somebody to set me up. Let me get on another dating site. Let me go out on that date and that thing that he's awful and she's awful and that's terrible and that he's not smart enough. She's not. I was dating my brother. <laughs> Maybe that was the first problem. <laughs> it was the first problem. He's not smart enough, she's not smart enough, not pretty enough, not tall enough, not short enough, not spiritual enough, not good enough, not as good as me, too good for me, that's not good, not enough money, he's not good enough, that's just never going to work. What would people think if I was at that now? So needless to say, I was single. So in the middle of all that, I am, I really do want it. I really, really do want it. And I really believe somewhere that I can have it. And I really do believe 
that it's true that I am made in the image of a creator. Therefore, I have a right to create. So I'm wondering, what's the problem? So I start to wonder, what's missing? What am I still not believing that's having me believe that this is impossible? Because if it's not showing up, the block must be here. It must be inside of me somewhere. Because I read once that Deepak Chopra said, desire is evidence that you have all that you need to succeed. Desire, the desire itself is evidence that you have everything that you need. So as I started to be a yes, I started to think things like, wow, I really want this. I really want this. I really want this. Please show me how. Please show me how. Fill me with your intelligent direction. Fill me with your intelligent direction. Show me how. Show me how. I am ready. I am willing. I'm available. And there was one particular day that I sat down in Starbucks and I started to write. It brings tears to my eyes, just thinking about it. And I was tearing up then too and I got the pen. And I said, where are you? Where are you? I'm looking for you. I know you're looking for me. I know you're looking for me. I know we'll find each other. I know we'll find each other. And when we find each other, we're going to know. When we find each other, we're going to recognize each other. We're, we will. We'll find each other. I know you're looking for me. I'm here. I'm looking for you. I know you're there. And I'm not going to give up hope. I know you're there. And I would write this every day, over and over and over. I love you. We're going to create a beautiful home together. We're going to have children. We're going to be so in love. We're going to have so much fun. We're going to have a beautiful life. I am here for you. I am here for you. I'm waiting. I wonder where you are. I wonder what you look like. And then I accepted a date. This was like three months later. And it was with Callan. And we were driving to the Hamptons. And on the way to the Hamptons, we're chatting, chatting, chatting. And we get to the Hamptons, and we're in this beautiful home on the beach, and we're just getting to know each other. We were friendly. She had been taking class, but it hadn't been an idea in my mind, actually, that it would be her. And we get to the beach, and we have a glass of champagne, and literally, 20 minutes after getting to the beach, I went, oh my God, it's you. <laughs> I was so, it was like, it's her. And I went, this is our first date. This wasn't even a date. <laughs> she had actually asked me out before and I said, no, I'm not dating women right now. <laughs> So I said, let's just go to the Hamptons. Let's get to know each other more. This is like not a date. And I'm saying, oh my God, it's you. And you know what she said? Yes. I've been waiting for you to notice. This is not even a date. Now that's weird. But the point being, yes, when you're a yes, what happens? What's the difference? When you're a no, your perception is closed. You don't believe. And when you say things like, it's hard, it's hard, there's not enough men, there's not enough women, there's not enough opportunity, it's too hard to get up and work out, it's too hard to do this, it's too hard to date, too hard, too hard. What you're doing is hypnotizing yourself. What you're really saying is, I'm too weak. 
over and over, I'm too weak, I'm too weak, I'm not good enough. I'm, anytime you start being a no to what is, a no, this isn't good enough, I don't like this, where's my stuff, how come I don't have it yet, that's a no, that's closed, you are not available, you're not even available for the answer, you're not even available if the person is right in front of you or the job is right in front of you or the money's right in front of you, you're not available. You have to be a yes, and being a yes means being a yes always to all things, being a yes to challenge, being a yes to illness, being a yes to crying children, being a yes to not feeling good, being a yes to not having what you don't have yet. Just a yes. Yes simply means I am aware without judgment. Awareness without judgment. No label. Just looking at what is. Well, this is a situation. The situation is evidence of my thinking. It's evidence of my beliefs. There's nothing wrong with it. As soon as you say there's something wrong with where I am, something wrong with not having it, you're a no. As soon as you're like, wow, this is evidence, you're in a yes. And when you're a yes, you're open to seeing opportunities. You're open to hearing answers. You're now on the level consciously of the solution versus being more of the problem. So tonight what I want to leave you with is focus on being a yes. When you hear yourself complaining in traffic, move it to a yes. Just say, I'm in traffic. It doesn't have to be dramatic. When the weather's not right, oh, I hate this. Don't say that. Just be like, wow, it's raining. <laughs> That's it. The bank account is low. OK, bank account is low. Now what can I do about it? Now what can I do about it? Yes and, yes and, yes and. And the evidence you'll have when you're in a, when a, when you're in a yes is what do you think it is? You feel alive. You feel good. You feel possibility. You feel empowered. You feel loved. You feel strong because you've taken back your power back. So, on the count of three, you're all going to say, yes. <laughs> Are you ready? Yes. That wasn't it. That was true. <laughs> I have to say one, two, three. One, you're thinking about the thing that you want so freaking bad this year. You're thinking about the thing that it is a yes, no matter what, you will find a way. Two. You're thinking about that thing and you are vibrating. You're just making love to the universe and you and the universe are going to make a baby. <laughs> Might be twins. <laughs> Depends on how big your yes is. <laughs> Think of an orgasmic yes. Think of like, a, oh, yes. Can you do that? Yeah. Ah. One, two, three. Yes! yes! Woo! Congratulations, and so it is. So I'm moving on to announce our first panelist. Is everybody coming up? Yes, everybody come up, all of our panelists. So here's what we're doing. They're all going to sit here. We are so grateful for everybody that's showing up as a panelist tonight. These women are incredible. They all have something fantastic to say. I love them all dearly. They have been so so influential in making sure you guys are here in supporting us and spreading the word and supporting Tammy's liver fund, which is what a lot of tonight is about. And we are so excited to hear what everybody has to say. No, 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 you you Look how gorgeous talking, they are. Oh my goodness. Hi, Megan. This is a hot panel. Okay, we're going to start with Gabby. I have. Oh, you have. So let me introduce you just a little bit. So many of you may already know Gabby Bernstein. Gabby Bernstein is very dear to my heart. We have had a special connection. Um, I won't go into that because we don't have time, but we do. <laughs> I want to tell you more about her first. 
<laughs> Gabby Bernstein is an amazing author, an amazing coach, an amazing friend, an amazing supporter to, I know, all of us. And to many of you, you already love her. She wrote a book called May Cause Miracles. So tonight, you can expect a freaking miracle <laughs> because she is in the house. And wherever Gabby is, miracles are happening. Woo! She's a regular on the Today Show. She's got a, a segment that she does regularly, and she's awesome on it. And she's got a new book coming out. What's the name of your new book? Miracles Now. Miracles Now. 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 <laughs> and yes. my favorite is uh, she was on Super Soul Sunday with Oprah, and it was my favorite show. I love her dearly, and I want her to have the mic, so I'm going to sit down. Okay. Thank you. Standing up. Oh, Standing this up, is a stand-up crowd. I didn't know what was happening here. Is this mic loud enough for you guys? Can you hear me? How are you all? You're doing nice, yeah. Okay, well, I'm, I'm very, very happy and honored to be here. Um, I just wanted to look at both of you for a second. Uh, both Terry and Patricia are very, very dear guides in my life. And a lot of my story tonight actually hovers around when I first met you. So I'm sorry if I had my back to you while no I problem. talk about you, but no I love problem. you deeply, I like very, very deeply. Uh, so, so first of all, I've had a very nice, exciting night. I took the subway, which I don't normally do, <laughs> which was really awesome. <laughs> so much more efficient and so much faster and so much cheaper than Uber. So it was amazing. Um, so, so we were asked to talk about our dark night of the, our soul, the dark night of the soul for <laughs> each of us in our own in individual lives and on our spiritual journeys and our quest to stepping into the women that we are here to be today. And for me, I, I had a very epic dark night of the soul. <laughs> I, uh, I actually kind of get uncomfortable when I come to the west side of town because my dark night of the soul took place around here. <laughs> so you know when you go to those places, you're like, oh god, I don't know if I want to go back. So uh, I, I moved east, and I, I like to stay east. And, and in that experience in my life, I actually was literally right here. I was uh, 20, from the age 21 to 25, I was living uh, in the West Village, my I had an office um, literally on 24th and 7th, um, and I was representing nightclubs in New York City. I was I was living a very very fast paced life, really pushing, really controlling, really manipulating, really living in a no, as Patricia said. I was living in a no. Uh, everything to me was an obstacle. The way that I perceived my life was constantly a challenge. And I was in this mindset and this perception that the louder I scream and the more that I push, the more I will achieve and accomplish and the happier I will be. Uh, does anyone resonate with that? <laughs> yeah. And so we know that when we're in that energy of push and scream and control and manipulate and make things happen, inevitably we are fighting against the natural flow of the universe. We are not living in the flow. We are fighting against it. We are swimming against the stream. And so that experience for me of swimming against the stream, of living in such a feeling, that pressure cooker of I'm here to do something great, but I feel I have to push to make it happen, really led me down some very dark corners. And I, I had many moments throughout that period of my life where I had sparks of light enter in. Even though I was really seeking and searching for this happiness outside of myself, whether it be through my credentials or my relationships or the fact that I had access to every nightclub on 23rd Street. <laughs> um, oh God, it's so frightening to think about. <laughs> so, th but the fact that that was, that was something that was so fulfilling to me at the time, uh, in, internally I was very spiritually and emotionally bankrupt and I was living in this way where I was seeking uh, something so, so much greater than what I could ever have imagined, but I was looking in all the wrong places. And so at that point in time, I really had to start to see that there was a different direction I had to move in. I had this desire to change, but I kept resisting, much like Terry was discussing. There's this desire to change, but I continuously resisted. I continuously said, no, I, I got this. Um, when people came to me and said, oh, you know, there may be an issue here, I can continue to believe and stay in that energy if I've got this. And in time, those experiences of trying to control and manipulate circumstances eventually really will unravel. Eventually, we will no longer have a choice. And that is, in my opinion, our great opening. 
It's our great divine encounter with spirit, the moment that we recognize that things are not working, the moment that we recognize that life is not flowing naturally, that things could be easier, that there is a gentler, softer way to this life that we're living, but we haven't been allowing ourselves to experience that. And so that moment of recognition for me came eight years ago. I was, uh, at that time, in that controlling state, I was very addicted to that outside world, addicted to drugs, addicted to alcohol, addicted to romantic relationships, severely codependent. I had, much like uh, Patricia was saying, in a relationship, out of a relationship, and looking for that happiness and that self-worth in the arms of someone else. And that, at the time, also was so shameful for me. I don't know if anyone ever suffered from codependency, but that's such a shameful thing for me. And I, I felt this, this deep desire to clean that up. And with that desire, all I needed was really that opening, that door of saying yes, as Patricia said, that opening to say, I'm here to do something greater than be this girl that's sitting in the back of a nightclub on a Sunday night snorting cocaine. That was the reality I was dwelling in. And so there came this great day on October 2nd of 2005 when I had this moment where I said, I, I need to see things differently. I need to experience my life with more grace. I need a miracle. And I didn't know what that meant. I didn't know what I was asking for. But I really set myself up for a divine invitation. And that next morning, I heard this very authoritative voice come forward. And that voice said to me, get clean, and you will live a life beyond your wildest dreams. And I'm very proud to say that I've been listening to that voice ever since. I've been really saying yes to that voice and really s allowing myself to continue forward one day at a time dwelling in the energy of a empowered voice, a voice that's guiding me and leading me and showing me the next right action without trying to make something happen. And so I've, be I've been sober since that day, October 2nd of 2005, and I've been rebuilding and reorganizing and reinterpreting all of the fear-based belief systems that I once dwelled in, the one that I once believed in so deeply, and I've been on a journey of unlearning and remembering and unlearning all the fear that I chose to hold on to and remembering all the light and the greatness that I truly am. And so what happens when we have those divine little moments, when we have that little spark of light that comes in and says, there has to be a miracle, there is a better way, we open this massive door to receive all the spiritual guidance, all of the support systems, all of the lectures like this, all of the people that we need to support us and hold us and guide us and lift us up so that we can elevate ourselves so that in turn we can elevate the world. And so at that time I was led to people like Patricia Moreno and Terry Cole. And so I'll close really by saying that uh, once you start to say yes, then you have to really pay attention to the divine people that you are led to. I lived around the corner from the equinox, and Patricia became my guru. And I would go into Intensati, and I it really picked me up off the ground. And it really re helped me rebuild the belief system of who I really am and who I'm here to be. And then finding friends like Terry and all of these sisters here behind me to really hold me up and, and continue to hold me up. And so I hope that you all, if you are having that experience where you may be in that dark night of your soul right now, that there is that moment, that divine moment, where you can just say there has to be a better way. And in that simple decision, that simple conscious decision to see things differently, you're saying yes. And so, so really, to, to really take a cue from Patricia, Say yes to the fact that there is a better way and you will be guided to all the resources that you need to open your heart to receive the guidance to change. And so um, again, thank you so much for having me here. Yeah.